Hey guys, Robbie Falk here for another reaction video, Mississippi State and UMass on homecoming. And they finally did it. They finally got back in the win column. It was an enjoyable night when all things were said and done. Mississippi State got a chance to experience a win again, 45 to 20. It was far from perfect. I don't think there's gonna be a perfect game for Mississippi State anytime soon. But the bottom line is they won the game. And I, I'm really happy for these players um, because you know just as much as it's been frustrating for you guys as fans and for everybody else that follows this program, there is no one more frustrating than every single person in that locker room. Uh, that locker room is a collective, the coaching staff. They've done everything they can to try to figure this thing out and figure out a way to win. And uh, I can promise you that they're not trying to lose these ball games. They're not going out there and not playing hard, things like that. They have wanted to win a game since the second week of the season. It hasn't come. Today was a chance to just take it off, take that load off and enjoy a win for the first time since August 31st, whenever that first game was against Eastern Kentucky. And uh, really happy for these guys. You can kind of see it on their faces throughout the year, just how frustrating it's been. And a lot of them, I think, have had a, a nice positive attitude. You know, we haven't been as positive and uh, there hasn't been a whole lot to be positive about, but Tonight, you look at it as a collective. You win the ball game, 45 to 20. It was it was good to see those guys celebrating again post game and happy. Uh, so pump for those guys uh, for that. Not going to be too negative about this because I think a lot of these things are just rehashed over and over. I, I don't want to just dwell on the negatives about the defense tonight because they won the ball game. And I thought, you know, after what happened early in the ball game, for State to kind of buckle down and do what they did, I think was impressive. And, you know, it, it is UMass at the end of the day. And you gave up 78 plays in this game. And you gave up 40 minutes of time possession. And you had this first two drives that were, um, you know, a struggle for you. But with this team losing seven games in a row and then going down by 10 points early in that first first half and in the first quarter, I could have very easily seen this thing unraveling and turning into a loss for Mississippi State. Um, instead, you had the freshman Michael Van Buren lead you down the field and score a touchdown. I thought that first touchdown that they got in the second quarter was big to get that one. And then the 97-yard drive, even with Mississippi State just taking the lead there for the first time and going up 14-10, to 10, that actually felt like a backbreaker early in the ball game because I don't think UMass was able to recover after that. Um, and it's not even arguable, they weren't ever able to recover. Uh, it was really important to, to put together those defensive stops that you did as the game went on. If you look at the first two possessions, UMass had, um, you know, over 110 yards of offense on two possessions. I scored 10 points off of that. The next one, two, three, four, five, six possessions – were empty possessions for UMass. That was big. Mississippi State hasn't had a stretch like that this year other than Eastern Kentucky. It's the two non-conference games, and there's a reason for that. And UMass is just not as talented as some of these, some of these teams that State's playing. But even on the possessions, you know, you, you had uh, four possessions where you gave up over 30 yards. So UMass was still moving the football a little bit, but you got off the field. This defense isn't capable of putting together three and out after three and out. It's just, it's not gonna happen. And it won't happen the rest of the way. And they had two three and outs in a row in the um, second quarter over to the third quarter. And that's already, you know, kind of uncommon for them. But just getting off the field is kind of what you're looking for now for Mississippi State. It's, it's not about having dominant showings in the defensive side of the ball, because it's just not gonna happen. But can you force those punts? That's what I talked about, you know, during the week. Can Mississippi State force some of those punts? Can they hold them to field goals? Because I felt like they were going to be able to score. And that's what they were able to do. They held them to two field goals in the game, and they forced them to punt five times. And um, they had three scoring drives. That's a win for Mississippi State. That was a uh, – four scoring drives. That was a that was a, a solid job by the Bulldogs. Um, 335 yards of offense for UMass. Uh, 136 passing, I thought they were pretty good in the passing game, but you know, UMass wasn't great anyways. Um, four yards a rush, that's, you could knock that down a tick. They had almost 200 yards rushing, but they ran it almost 50 times. 
So you would like to get that in the threes against a team like this, but otherwise it was it was okay for Mississippi State, especially as the game went on. Um, nine of 17 on third downs, it's a lot of third down conversions. Um, uh, 26 first down total, first downs total, which was the same amount as Mississippi State had, but the difference between the two teams was the explosive plays. And Mississippi State averaged eight yards per play. UMass averaged four. So uh, State doubles them up there. 463 yards of offense for the Bulldogs. Quick possessions. They had uh, 20 less minutes on the field, or 21 actually, than what UMass had. No turnovers for State offensively. They forced one. Had two sacks. I came into the game with five sacks total this year. They get two in this one. So that was they got a little bit more pressure, six tackles for loss. Um, and, again, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they're playing UMass. But – uh, is progress. You have to take it. Five for nine on thirds for Mississippi State, pretty good. 55 plays, uh, averaged eight yards a rush. The best states looked running the football. They had three runs for 30 or more yards. Two of those went for touchdowns. Johnny Daniels, I wish we, could, I wish I could get him a little more uh, action. Six carries, he had 92 yards, 15 yards a rush, had two 30-yard run, two 30-plus yard runs. I would love to see that guy carry more of a low because I think he's more um, – you know, he's got that explosiveness, but he's also – he runs it harder. He's hitting the hole harder than what you see. But Davon Booth was good too, 11 carries, 76 yards. And then how about Xavier Gayton, the freshman, another kid I would love to see get more carries. You could have got more um, from your running backs. You could have run the football a little bit more. Um, you had 19 carries out of your three backs, and they averaged, you know, probably 12, 13 yards of – a rush. Xavier Gaten broke off a 72-yard run. So, actually, they had four rushes, I think, for over 30 yards. Uh, a lot of potential in that kid. I love that kid and his explosiveness. So, you got a little something with those running backs. I think the running backs are starting to kind of come into their own a little bit. Uh, but Johnny Daniels was excellent. Six carries, 92 yards, like I said. And Davon Booth, 11 for 76. So, no complaints from the running game today. Eight yards a carry. And uh, would have been uh, – almost 10 yards a carry had they not had the sacks. They had three sacks that dropped them to uh, 241 yards rushing. They should have had 260. So this was uh, quite possibly their best game run the football. And you kind of you saw a little bit of what the veer and shoot really looks like with these explosive runs. That's something that I, I think has been a slow build for this team. That just haven't had a lot of those big explosive runs. And I think you're starting to see it a little bit. And I know it's UMass, but we've seen a little more of that against SEC teams too. We saw it against A&M. We, we saw it a little bit against Arkansas. So they're getting there. I think at its peak, Jeff Lebby is going to have a lot more of these explosive runs becoming a thing of the offense and maybe even more explosive runs than what you see in the passing game. And uh, there were some big passes in this one too. Kevin Coleman had a 51-yard catch. Uh, Jordan Mosley, welcome back to him, starting to get a little more action. 55-yard catch and on an amazing reception. Kind of getting interfered with. They've ended up waving the flag, but he had a 55-yard catch there. Uh, Sadie Traoria had a nice uh, touchdown reception for 19 yards. Um, and sorry, Kevin Coleman, had a, his long was 26. The yards after catch was the, um, was, was the 51 yards. But uh, Mosley went over 100 yards on four catches, and Kevin Coleman five for 52. They were trying to get Stonka Burnside a touchdown. He just could not pull it in. Uh, I wonder about Stonka's future and where it where it uh, ends up. I'm I've told people don't give up on him just yet because I, I really feel like he has the potential to be a, a good receiver in this league. I feel like the potential to be an even better player is on the other side of the ball. Just my opinion. Been watching Stonka since he was in, in ninth grade. I think he is an NFL safety, and I don't know if that comes for him. Like I said, I think he can be a very good wide receiver on this level. I think he can play for a long time at wide receiver, but it just feels like to me that that safety spot has the potential to be a difference maker for him in his career. I wonder if we've seen him in punt return a little bit this year, and he's just a heat-seeking missile out there. I wonder if that's something that this staff considers moving forward. And he might not want to play that. I, I know that he wants to be a wide receiver, so we'll see. Uh, but I, I still think he has a bright future ahead. On the defensive side of the ball, um, Stone Blanton led the team with 14 tackles. 
he Stone ha hasn't had you know the greatest moments at times this year, but I feel like he's just really steady. He's been steady for state most of the year. His PFF grades are pretty good. He seems to be in position a lot. Uh, you know, this defense hasn't had a lot of bright spots, but it, I feel like he's had a good season. 14 tackles on the day. Nick Mitchell had 10 tackles, had a tackle for loss. Um, Isaac Smith had seven tackles. Corey Ellington had nine. Uh, your two safeties there. I thought Ty Cooper did some really good things. Had a couple of tackles for loss in the game. Had a sack. State was able to get, like I said, two sacks. So, um, you know, some good things for the defense. I think, you know, obviously, you know, some of these things, they are what they are. You know, it, it didn't look great early on in the game, and they they weren't consistent enough from just coming out and just being better than Massachusetts on the other side of the ball. But what you're looking for for this team is getting off the field, and that's what they they did tonight. They got off the field more often than, than not. Uh, got an interception from Brylon Lanier. So uh, some good things there for the defense. So the Bulldogs improved at 2-7. and seven. Um, you know, There's not a whole lot of uh, – improvement from a win-loss perspective that you can take now moving forward. You got Tennessee on the road, you got Missouri here at home for senior day, and then you got Ole Miss on the road. And Tennessee and Ole Miss, those are gonna be really difficult games for State considering what they do on offense. And Missouri can too. Missouri Missouri is uh, offense, especially if they got Brady Cook, as very dangerous for the Bulldogs. I think that's the most winnable game. But at this point, like State, it, it would be nice to grab one of those games so you don't go winless in the SEC and something to build on. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. Just the way that they've struggled defensively, I don't know. So um, we'll see. But for tonight, I think it's a positive night for the Bulldogs. They get a win. They get back in the win column. It's something that they can, you know, go to sleep tonight and feel good about, wake up on, on Sunday and start preparing now for Tennessee, a team that hasn't been – perfect this year they haven't been great but they're still a playoff contending team and uh on saturday night in uh, knoxville i haven't looked at the score of the kentucky game i imagine they're still going to be in contention for that next week so bulldogs have a chance to play spoiler that would certainly be huge for this program to get that marquee win we'll see if they're able to do it all right guys appreciate you subscribe to this youtube channel if you haven't already subscribe to our site over at maroon and white daily uh, have some great things going on. We just hit a new milestone, uh, more members than we've ever had over there. And uh, we're really proud of what we've done now in a, just over a year as a, web, as a website. I haven't been there quite a year. Paul started last October and uh, we've made some tremendous strides in just one year, more than what we did when we started Bulldogs 247, um, you know, back, I guess it was about 12 years ago, Paul started that site. I came on in 2014. We have more members now than we did in our first six years uh, at, at Bulldogs 247. So it's been, uh, or five years, I guess. It's been pretty special. We have a special community. We, we love our members. We get into it. We go back and forth, but such a passionate fan base over there at, at our site at Maroon and White Daily, and you got to be a part of it. We'd love to have you. Come check us out. Basketball season starts on Monday. Paul and I are going heavy duty into basketball on top of what we're doing now with football and football recruiting. So uh, please come be a part of it. $1 for the first week, 50% off of an annual subscription if you sign up now with the promo co code JOIN50. So uh, please come see us. We'd love to have you. Thunder and Lightning, we're going on YouTube probably tonight. Might be put up tomorrow. I don't know what Brian plans to do, but I'm about to go record that right now with him. So you guys want to stay tuned for that as well. All right, for Robbie Falk over at Maroon and White Daily, appreciate you, and uh, we will catch you down the road.